hello there and welcome to the card grotto today i'm adding sparkle and shimmer to watercolors so let's get started i'm taking a sheet of artistry by alter new hot pressed watercolor paper and i've cut that into two small pieces so that i can do my stamping on top i'm using the alter new stamp wheel to do the stamping here so I'm just popping that piece there into the corner of the stamp wheel and then I'm taking the all to new wallpaper art stamp set. This is an older set but it's one of my favourites. I'm actually not sure if I've ever shared a card with it online but I have made a lot of cards with this set. So I'm just popping that one flower there onto the watercolour paper, taking the top flip plate of the stamp wheel and popping that in place to pick up that stamp. I'm then going to ink up the image using Alter New Obsidian Pigment Ink. This is a really beautiful ink. It stamps really crisp and dark black. But I am going to stamp this a few times because I'm stamping onto watercolour paper. And although this is hot pressed watercolour paper and it's less textured than cold pressed, it does still have some texture to it. And the centre of that flower is quite solid so I want to stamp this a few times just to make sure that I get a really nice dark impression so I'm stamping that twice and then I do end up stamping it a third time again just to get that center really dark so just popping that down in place and then really pressing that down and then I love the leaves in that set, but I wanted something different to be able to watercolour with. So I'm taking the leaf here from the Golden Days stamp set. And I thought that this was quite nice. It's a cluster of three leaves and they're quite open. So it's quite good to do some watercolouring with. I do want to stamp this twice. So I'm just focusing that leaf cluster towards the bottom of that piece of watercolour paper so that I can stamp it twice just on that piece. So just picking that up with the stamp wheel again and then I can ink that up with the same obsidian pigment ink. And although I got a really nice impression the first time around, I want to make sure that the saturation of black ink is going to be similar to the saturation of black ink that I used on the flower. And because I stamped that so many times, I do want to stamp these leaves twice. So just flipping over that watercolour paper so that I can stamp this another time on the other side. And again, I'm just going to stamp that twice just to get that really nice dark saturation of colour. I'm going to be using some watercolours today to colour in the image. And I'm using the new Artistry by Alter New watercolour tubes. I'm taking dark cyan and I'm just adding a little bit of that onto a porcelain palette. And then I'm going to use phalo green. And I'm just going to do the same thing. I didn't actually need this amount of watercolour paint, but you can let it dry on the palette and then reuse it. That's the great thing about watercolours. You can reuse them until they've completely gone. I'm then taking a size 4 watercolour brush and I've also got some water in a pot here. And I'm going to just slacken out the paints a little bit so add some water to them i am more of a kind of controlled watercolorist so i don't like my watercolor paints to be too wet so i'm just adding a small amount of water here to the paints just to loosen them up and then i've also got a reusable cloth that i like to use to dab off any excess water on my brush so like i say i'm a little bit more of a controlled watercolorist and therefore i don't like to have too much water on my brush so anytime i'm moving my paintbrush to the right hand side i'm placing it in that pot of water Anytime I move it to the left hand side, I'm dabbing off any excess water onto that cloth. So I'm starting off by doing kind of petal by petal on this image. So I'm picking up some of the paint, adding that onto the image and I'm adding the darker colour towards the centre of the flower. 
I'm then cleaning off my brush so that I've just got clean water on that brush and I'm then kind of moving the colour towards the tip of the petal and then cleaning my brush again dabbing off the excess water and then again bringing out that colour further towards the tip of the petal I want the tip of the petal to be almost completely white I'm just using the one colour here today I usually like to mix watercolours together. I feel that especially for florals, it does give a more realistic look. However, I wanted to show you that you can just use one colour of like one shade of watercolour if you wanted to. And I still think it gives a really nice look. And since I'm not really going for a realistic look here because I'm adding shimmer to it anyway, I don't really need it to look realistic. So I really love this dark cyan colour. I think it's really pretty and so I wanted to use that for my flower today so I'm just going through the petals I'm doing them individually I'm not too concerned if the water kind of runs into each petal because I'm just using the one shade but if you were and you were using a lot more water with your water colouring then you might want to skip a petal that's kind of next to each other so that the water colour doesn't bleed into each other so just finishing off here with that last petal there at the bottom and then this is really quite light so I do want to go back in with another layer of colour to really deepen that slightly and I find that this is the best way for me to use watercolours to do it in layers. Technically with watercolour you can remove <laughs> colour so if you go a little bit too dark you can lift off some of the watercolour so you would add a little bit of water to it, dab off the excess with like a paper towel or something like that and you can lift most watercolours quite easily but it's still easier for me personally to go in lighter and add layers if I want to and that usually often Often is how I would kind of mix colours as well so I'd go in maybe with one shade and then I would add another layer of a different shade to kind of darken things up a little bit I did get a few bristles come out of this brush here so I did have to remove those that is what I was doing there I was just trying to remove one of the bristles but I'm just going around here adding in that colour with a second layer and I think that looks really pretty it's really quite simple water colouring but I do like doing that sometimes just really nice kind of plain simple one shade water colouring so I'm doing the same thing here for the leaves starting off by adding the watercolour to kind of like the bottom of the leaf cleaning off my brush bringing in that clear water to blend that out towards the tip of the leaf and this phalo green again is not necessarily a colour that I would use on its own for leaves I do often add some blue or some yellow to leaves but again I just wanted to keep it really quite simple today and just use the two shades of watercolour because I'm adding that shimmer on top I thought it was fine just to do the two shades as they are so I did the other leaf in the exact same way and now I'm going back in with my second layer and I do think that this does make quite a bit of difference to the overall look of the leaves and the flower as well. So I'm taking the Auto New Iridescent Ink Shimmer Spray and I'm spraying some of that into the palette. I'm then going to pick that up with a wet brush and then I'm going to dab that onto the flower and the leaves. I'm trying to avoid the stab lines if possible and I'm just adding it towards where the darkest colour is on the leaves and the petals if you wanted to have the whole thing covered in shimmer what you can do is actually spray some of that shimmer into the watercolor itself or even into your water and that would mean that the whole thing was going to be shimmery I didn't really want that look for this today but it is a really nice way to add shimmer to watercolors obviously there are iridescent watercolors and shimmery watercolors about but if you don't want to invest in lots of different watercolors this is a really great way to add that shimmer without having to have an extra product um, most people do tend to have some kind of shimmer spray and I do find that they work quite well it is a little bit difficult here to see on camera but in real life it is really kind of sparkly and very pretty so you can just about see that here when I lift that up to the camera 
I don't have the coordinating dies for the wallpaper art set so I'm taking my scissors here and I'm just going to fussy cut the image out. I am leaving a small white border so that it looks similar to what I'm going to do for the leaves because I do have the dies for that set so they're going to cut out with that border. I'm not the best at fussy cutting I have to be honest. What I try and do is keep the scissors generally trying to sort of keep them straight and then I try and move the cardstock or the paper whatever I'm cutting and try and move that instead and I do find that I get a slightly smoother cut by doing it that way but I'm not going to share the whole thing here on camera it did take me a little while to cut out this image like I said I do have the coordinating dies for the golden day set thank goodness so I ran those through my die cutting machine I've then taken an all to new terrific tag die and I've cut that from the same hot pressed watercolor paper and I'm just placing my images on top so that I can see where I want them to be before I stick anything down. I do want to add a little bit of background colour onto this tag. I thought it would look quite nice, kind of a little bit less dark, although I do actually quite like it as it is. I thought that it would kind of look a little bit like there was some sort of flowers in the background, but they're kind of blurred out. So I'm taking that same dark cyan colour that I used on the flower and I'm kind of just mapping around the outside edges of these images. I could go in the whole tag and add colour to it but there's not really a need to do so to add the paint behind the images because you're not going to see that. So I'm just using them to map out where I want the colour to be because I left a small gap between the images and kind of where I'm painting it. I do want to move that colour inwards. I didn't want to accidentally get any paint on the border of those images. So I'm just going in here with that dark cyan colour and I'm trying to make some of the areas a little bit darker, some of them a little bit lighter. But I'm doing a similar thing like I did on the images where I'm adding the darkest colour towards where the image is and then trying to fade it out a little bit to the colour of the watercolour paper just going in with that water there just to try and fade it out a little bit and then I do go back in a few times with that water just to make sure that I don't get any harsh edges and although it looks a little bit weird with that shape I, like I said I don't need to add in the rest of the watercolour in the centre I'm adding some glue tape onto the back of another tag that I've cut from that hot pressed watercolour paper. This doesn't need to be the watercolour paper but I, I don't like when papers don't match and so I just cut it from the same watercolour paper so that everything matches and it just looks a little bit neater from the back of the tag if I want to add a personal message to that. I'm adding some more glue tape onto the back of the leaves but just making sure that I'm not covering the whole of the area because some of those leaves do overlap that tag. So just popping those down behind the flower. I haven't stuck the flower down at this point. I'm just using it as a placeholder that I, so that I can see where those leaves need to be adhered. I'm then adding some instant dimension foam tape onto the back of the flower, removing the backings of that and then I can pop that down. And I am just taking my time here just to make sure that I get it in the right place so that you don't see any of that kind of white area around the flower. And now it just covers up that centre and I didn't, like I said, I didn't really need to add the watercolour over the entire tag. I've then taken the essential sentiments hot foil plate set from all to new and this is one that I have used in the past so I foiled it with white foil onto black cardstock and because you foil all of the sentiments in one go and then you die cut all of the sentiments in one go I did have some extras laying around and I thought that this would work quite nicely for this tag and then to finish off I added some twine through the top of the tag and tied that in a bow so you can see that shimmer there especially on the flower I think it looks really pretty it is quite subtle but in real life I do think it makes quite a big difference to the overall look of the tag but you could definitely go bolder with that shimmer if you wanted to 
Links to the products that I used will be listed in the description bar on YouTube and also over on my blog. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it and I will see you soon.